Welcome back to A Twist of Faith. I'm your host, Alex Parkview. A couple notes real quick. Um, our listener base is expanding geographically. I've been getting quite a few international listens. So I'm looking at possibly dropping an extra episode or two every week, depending. I will maintain the every Wednesday for certain. But in the future, there may be one or two extra episodes put out a week, depending on time and life and just all kinds of everything. But I'm hoping to at least be able to put out two to three a week. So we'll see. I'm not going to do anything that's going to totally destroy my body, my mind, my peace, because this podcast is actually a good way for my peace to just manifest. So this week, we're going to continue our look at Air, the Book of Lucifer, the Enlightenment. We're going to pick back up in some evidence of a new satanic age, Right after the seven deadly sins were addressed previously. So we're going to pick up where we left off last week. Stay tuned for that. Some evidence of a new satanic age. Times have changed. Religious leaders no longer preach that all of our natural actions are sinful. We no longer think sex is dirty or that taking pride in ourselves is shameful. Or that wanting something someone else has is vicious. Of course not. Times have changed. If you want proof of this, just look at how liberal the churches have become, why they're practicing all the things that you preach. Satanists hear these and similar statements all the time, and they agree wholeheartedly. But if the world has changed so much, why continue to grasp at the threads of a dying faith? If many religions are denying their own scriptures because they are out of date and are preaching the philosophies of Satanism... Why not call it by its rightful name? Satanism. Certainly it would be far less hypocritical. In recent years, there has been an attempt to humanize the spiritual concept of Christianity. This has manifested itself in the most obvious non-spiritual means. Masses which had been said in Latin are now said in native languages, which only succeeds in making the nonsense easier to understand and at the same time robs the ceremony of the esoteric nature, which is consistent with the tenets of dogma. It is much simpler to obtain an emotional reaction using words and phrases that cannot be understood than it is with the statements which even the simplest mind will question when hearing them in an understandable language. If priests and ministers were to have used the devices to fill their churches 100 years ago that they use today, they would have been charged with heresy, called devils, oft times persecuted, but certainly excommunicated without hesitation. The religionists wail, we must keep up with the times, forgetting that, due to the limiting factors and deeply ingrained laws of white light religions, there can never be sufficient change to meet the needs of man. Past religions have always represented the spiritual nature of man, with little or no concern for his carnal or mundane needs. They have considered this life but transitory, and the flesh merely a shell. Physical pleasure trivial, and pain a worthwhile preparation for the kingdom of God. How well the utter hypocrisy comes forth when the righteous make a change in their religion to keep up with man's natural change. The only way that Christianity can ever completely serve the needs of man is to become as Satanism is now. It has become necessary for a new religion based on man's natural instincts to come forth. They have named it. It is called Satanism. It is that power condemned that has caused the religious controversy over birth control measures, a disgruntled admission that sexual activity, for fun, is here to stay. It is the devil who caused women to show their legs, to titillate men, the same kind of legs now socially acceptable to gaze upon, which are revealed by young nuns as they walk about in their shortened habits. What a delightful step in the right or left direction. Is it possible we will soon see topless nuns sensually throwing their bodies about to the Mrs. Solemnus Rock? Satan smiles and says he would like that fine. Many nuns are very pretty girls with nice legs. So again, you have LeVay kind of stretching some truths. I mean, yeah, there is evidence of religions kind of pandering to people. And again, it kind of falls more with Catholicism than the like more diehard Christian sects. Like uh, the Pope not condemning politicians due to their beliefs. 
still allowing them to participate in Catholic Mass and put up the appearance that they're good people, despite the fact that they are in full support of things, which I'm not saying they're wrong to support, like I said, disclaimer, no judgment, etc. You've heard this from me before, I just, I'm repeating it because it might be the first episode you're listening to. But it does not mesh with the religion that they claim to ascribe to. Like, you cannot be a Catholic and think that abortion is a good thing. Now, Catholics have this whole thing called uh, dogmatic law. And I forget the exact term. It's actually mentioned in the movie Dogma by Kevin Smith, which I've referenced. But it's the um, as above, so below tenet of the Catholic faith. Like, as you hold it true on earth, I shall hold it true in heaven. And a lot of people kind of take that to mean that they can recreate the Catholic faith. Again, in the actual Bible, there's no mention of a pope. So, I mean, the whole Catholic faith is honestly kind of a stretch that it was just created for power and money and just the ability to control people. But Catholic faith, in all of its teachings, has always said that the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, abortion, tattoo... The ta Catholic faith is one of the harshest religions the most judgy, judgmental doctrines, but now, in modern times, they're trying to reinvent themselves and reinvent God using papal law, which is when the Pope says something is so, and then ascribing that to, as you hold it here on earth, because the Pope said so, God has all the true in heaven. Well, the Pope is fallible, God is infallible, again, according to the religious texts. So, I'm just, I mean, I try to reserve and kill off my personal bias when I talk about this stuff, but you, you'll figure out pretty quickly I'm not big on the Catholic faith just because I think it's a load of shit. I'm sorry, but I just do. If you disagree, please show me some proof to the contrary as to why it's a good, worthwhile religion. I just, I don't get it. I, I was raised Roman Catholic, so I really do know a lot about the Catholic faith. Again, the whole studying thing when I was little. But that's also the faith that pushed me to study everything else because it was just so fucking dumb. So, but again, slightly off topic, LaVey is talking about and mocking pretty much the Catholic faith because he says that these, they're preaching the philosophies of Satanism. He says uh, the attempts to humanize, like the masses in Latin, that was a big Catholic thing. I can't really speak Latin worth a damn, but I remember growing up in the Roman Catholic Church, like on holidays, they would actually do the uh, Mass in Latin, like Christmas, Easter, all the fancy important ones where they busted out the pretty colorful robes. They would go nuts, and it was Latin, and it was like a big performance. Like, the Catholic faith is a performance piece to me. But he says now they just do it all in languages that are easy to understand, and you can't really believe it when you hear it in simple dumb dumb terms, I guess, is what LeVay's saying here, because he says it's much simpler to obtain an emotional reaction using words and phrases that cannot be understood. So as soon as you can understand the words and phrases, you, you pretty much have to question it if you have a brain. And he mentions priests and ministers, says if they did it, they would have been charged with heresy, called devils, persecuted, excommunicated, excommunication to the full extent of the definition of the term, can pretty much only happen in the Catholic faith. Because they're the only ones who have the power to kick you out. Like, short little side, <clears throat> uh, I was in a Baptist church a while back, like this was many years ago, when I was still big on going to church before I realized the true hypocrisy of all religious churches, like the buildings. I'm not saying that everybody who has any religious following is a hypocrite. Some people actually believe and practice and live their lives accordingly. I do I do what I do without church. Like, I just, church to me is useless, and this is why, partly. I was in a Baptist church, and they kicked me out. I wasn't excommunicated, but they kicked me out. They asked me to please stop coming to their church because it was contrary to what they were trying to accomplish, having somebody like me in their church uh the background to that like at the time i was dating ex-wife number two 
and like I had spent the night at her house and the preacher had had this whole thing about character versus reputation character is who you are in the deep dark you and the lord know nobody can question it reputation is what other people think of you doesn't matter like he was telling this biblically and then not even like a week or two later after he had gone on this whatever about that he's like well somebody saw a post that you were spending the night at her house so that automatically means you two are having sex and we can't have you in our church anymore like judge much just hypocrisy it was pathetic Big part of why I stopped having anything to do with any actual official churches. And that was a Baptist, not a Catholic church. So, I mean, it's not only Catholic church, but the excommunication, that big, scary word where you're, like, kicked out for life and fuck you, you can't come back ever. Like, I could set foot in this Baptist church again. He's not going to, like, call the cops on me because it's a church. It's open to people. But he asked me to stop coming because of my lifestyle and his beliefs. And it was just a big clusterfuck, like. Churches ruin religion. They ruin spirituality. Some of the people can be great, but the leadership is just about money and power. That's all it boils down to. In that regard, I agree with LeVay. It's all about control, power, and money. In the like official gathering sense. And talking about the religion as well, we must keep up with the times. It's like an episode of Grey's Anatomy I saw. Uh, I think it was Bailey said... Um, your father, the church, haven't caught up to God yet. They haven't caught up to God. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that, like, God loves everything we do. Quite the contrary. The Bible tells people over and over that God is pissed off at virtually every facet of your life, but you have an out because he sent Jesus to die and forgive you of your sins. So it's not that God adores you, it's that God has given you a chance because his son made the ultimate sacrifice. So, all these shows that try to make it like, oh, God is ahead of our time? No, like, just call it what it is. Like, in that sense, I agree with LeVay. You can't say they haven't caught up to God, because God made his feelings very clear. Leviticus, the Ten Commandments, the Old Testament, and Jesus sacrifice died on the cross to atone for all the sins again that's christian faith but it's just i'm going off of levee talking about the churches talking about we must keep up with the times <clears throat> so he's right when he says that the past religions have always represented the spiritual nature of man even the again christian bible past religions uh matthew six thirty three. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness, and the rest shall be added unto you. Like, so all you're supposed to focus on is God and not give a damn about anything earthly, fleshly, physical, because it's just about the spiritual nature. There's no concern for your carnal or mundane needs. So see, like, LeVay sucked at the seven deadly sins. He really did. If you caught, didn't catch last week's episode... Give it a listen, you'll see what I'm talking about. Sucked at the seven deadly sins, but he makes up for it here because he makes some valid points. And the thing here about it is the devil who caused women to show their legs, titillate men. Well, that goes back to, like, witch hunts and all these people that said that they got their power from Satan, let alone Hecate, the goddess crone and mother that uh, supposedly gives the Wicca... Uh, faction, their powers, faction just being the first word I could think of to kind of fit it in the group of people. But uh, he talks about, what, are we going to see topless nuns? I mean, I'm sure the Catholic Church will go for that if it'll make money, keep them in control, and keep them in power over their congregations. They'll be like, oh, the Vatican released a new book called The Topless Book of uh, Mary Magdalene. And it says here that in the church... Yeah, you have to cover up your no-no spots, but good news, folks, the boobs are no longer part of the no-no spots, so you can stare at them nips and tits all day long. No harm, no foul. Have fun. Don't forget to drop a 50 in the collection plate. Thanks for coming out. So, LeVay actually does himself pretty proud here. Like I said, he just sucked at the seven deadly sins. Can't state that enough, but he, he makes up ground here. He's getting that intro. So we'll take a look and see what else he had to say right after this. 
All right, I'm going to read a little blurb here, and then I'm going to skip ahead, because it's just more of him bashing the Catholic Church, etc. But this blurb is too great not to share. Church picnics, despite all of Aunt Martha's talk about the Lord's bountiful harvest, are nothing more than a good excuse for Sunday gluttony, and everyone knows that lots more than Bible reading goes on in the bushes. I just love that, the way he sets it up. Like, everybody knows. I mean, look at all the Catholic schoolgirl fantasies that exist on TV and life. Uh, ask any dude, and at some point or another, they fantasized about a Catholic schoolgirl when they were younger. It's just, like, bingo, you nailed it there, LeVay. Had to mention that, because bravo, good job. <clears throat> but then we're going to skip ahead about a page and a half. And he goes, <clears throat> Satanism advocates practicing a modified form of the golden rule. Our interpretation of this rule is, do unto others as they do unto you, because if you do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and they in turn treat you badly, it goes against human nature to continue to treat them with consideration. You should do unto others as you would have them do unto you. But if your courtesy is not returned, they should be treated with the wrath they deserve. White witchcraft groups say that if you curse a person, it will return to you threefold, come home to roost, or in some way boomerang back to the center. This is yet another indication of the guilt-ridden philosophy which is held by these neo-pagan pseudo-Christian groups. White witches want to delve into witchcraft, but cannot divorce themselves from the stigma attached to it. Therefore, they call themselves white magicians and base 75% of their philosophy on the trite and hackneyed tenets of Christianity. Anyone who pretends to be interested in magic or the occult for reasons other than gaining personal power is the worst kind of hypocrite. The Satanist respects Christianity for at least being consistent in its guilt-ridden philosophy. Again, that's more Catholic than Christian, just a quick aside but can only feel contempt for people who attempt to appear emancipated from guilt by joining a witchcraft group and then practice the same basic philosophy as Christianity. White magic is supposedly utilized only for good or unselfish purposes, and black magic, we are told, is used only for selfish or evil reasons. Satanism draws no such dividing line. Magic is magic, be it used to help or hinder. The Satanist, being the magician, should have the ability to decide what is just, and then apply the powers of magic to attain their goals. During white magical ceremonies, the practitioners stand within a pentagram to protect themselves from the evil forces, which they call upon for help. To the Satanist, it seems a bit two-faced to call on these forces for help, while at the same time protecting yourself from the very powers you have asked for assistance. The Satanist realizes that only by putting himself in league with these forces can he fully and unhypocritically utilize the powers of darkness to his best advantage. In a satanic magical ceremony, the participants do not join hands and dance, ring around the rosy, in a circle, burn candles of various colors for various wishes, call out the names of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, while supposedly practicing the black arts, pick a saint for their personal guide and obtain help for the problems, dunk themselves in smelly oils and hope the money comes in, meditate so they can arrive at a great spiritual awakening, recite long incantations with the name of Jesus thrown in for good measure, between every few words, etc., 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 ad nauseum. You can tell the tones of disgust that he has there. Basically saying anybody who practices white magic is a hypocrite worse than the Christian Again, more so Catholic, because he seems to interchange Christian with Catholic, and they're really not the same thing, but for all intents and purposes of this. He says at least the Satanic Church can respect the fact that the Christians suck, and they know it, and they stick with it, and yeah, well, the witchcraft people are like, yo, help me, you dark evil thing, but I'm going to hide from you in my little circle of safety over here, because I just want your power, but I'm scared of you because I'm not strong enough. Like, he's just, he's got some uh, some bile going on for all these white witches. Because this is not the way to practice satanic magic. If you cannot divorce yourself from hypocritical self-deceit, you will never be as successful as a magician, much less a satanist. 
The satanic religion has not merely lifted the coin, it has flipped it completely over. Therefore, why should it support the very principles to which it is completely opposed by calling itself anything other than a name which is totally in keeping with the reversed doctrines which make up the satanic philosophy? Satanism is not a white light religion. It is a religion of the flesh, the mundane, the carnal, all of which are ruled by Satan, the personification of the left-hand path. Inevitably, the next question asked is, granted, you can't call it humanism because humanism is not a religion, but why even have a religion in the first place if all you do is what comes naturally anyways? Why not just do it? And then he goes into a little bit of a boring, to me at least, explanation talking about psychiatry ruined um, people's concepts of fantasy and dogma and basically thinks that humans need dogma, which is the theatrical fantasy enchantment to survive with their beliefs. It's a good, like, page, half a page, three quarters of a page right there. Not really going to get into that because it didn't really do anything for me. And he talks a little bit more about that and says that, uh, it is high time that human beings stopped fighting themselves and devoted their time to building temples designed for man's indulgences. Even though times have changed and always will, man remains basically the same. For 2,000 years, man has done penance for something he never should have had to feel guilty about in the first place. Now remember, LeVay actually got original sin wrong. I'm pretty sure that's kind of what he's referencing there, but he said original sin is fornication, which in any of the religions which he mocks or blames or reverse dogmatizes here, <clears throat> the original true original sin was not fornication, but it was the eating of the fruit from the tree from the knowledge of good and evil, uh, Adam and Eve eating the forbidden fruit, like that whole story of the serpent in the garden we were all taught as children. That is actually the original sin, eating that fruit of the knowledge of good and evil against the command of God. So he, he got the original sin wrong. Just a quick reminder on that. We are tired of denying ourselves the pleasures of life which we deserve. Today, as always, man needs to enjoy himself here and now instead of waiting for his rewards in heaven. So why not have a religion based on indulgence? Certainly, it is consistent with the nature of the beast. We are no longer supplicating weaklings trembling before an unmerciful God who cares not whether we live or die. We are self-respecting, prideful people. We are Satanists. Now, back when we discussed LeVay and the seven deadly sins, you remember, of course, he talked about pride because that's one of the big old seven deadlies. And in that regard, I would say he's right. People do have, like, their pride and stuff, and they should have self-respect. A lot of people care way too much what other people think, especially when it comes to their self-respect. Like, oh, Becky doesn't like me, so fuck. Something must be wrong with me. I'm a worthless sack of shit. No, fuck that. Self-respect. Respect yourself. Know that whatever you're doing is your best, assuming it is your best. And the fuck with what anyone thinks. I mean, I legitimately could give two shits what most people think about me. There are a select few people that I have given that power, air quote, <clears throat> of air quotes again, control over my life to live rent free in my head and actually give a fuck what they think about me. And that number is not really high. I can count it on less than a full hand. It's just... I'm not like an arrogantly proud person. I know I don't know everything. I do my best to fill in blanks when I can to help people understand things, to help break down the satanic Bible, for example. I do my best. I try my best. I'm proud of the fact that I'm putting myself out there to try to help all of you. And I have a great deal of respect for the work that I put in to make myself who I am. I don't just roll out of bed in the morning and be like, <laughs> Like, there's things I do every day that make me who I am. The fact that I'm covered in tattoos, it's part of who I am. Each one of my tattoos has a meaning. I mean, I can see the appeal there is in Satanism. I'm not going to sit here and say there's no appeals to it. LeVay just kills it because he's too obsessed with taking down and mocking the Catholic more so than Christian. Again, he interchanges the two, but he's mostly hating on Catholicism, if you know the difference between the two. 
But <clears throat> LeVay just he spends too much time mocking and trying to take down Catholicism, which is wasted energy because when you actually study all the shit, you find out pretty quick that about three quarters of Catholicism is contrived bullshit. So rather than waste your time trying to convince people of that, if they want to follow it, more power to them. If they want to follow LeVay, more power to them. I can see some good points LeVay makes. I see points in many religions. Y'all still probably haven't guessed what I actually claim is my whatever. And like I said, it doesn't matter what, because I'm just looking at this from that perspective of I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to try to help answer your questions. I'm going to talk about some cool shit that exists in various religions as far as ideas, texts, like the exorcism special I have coming up. I'm going to be doing Dante's Inferno, just anything religious or with religious undertones, which Dante's Inferno, I'm going to have to go over with a grain of salt because it's based largely on Catholicism. I mean, there's a whole thing called the Purgatorio Purgatory, which is complete bullshit biblically. But it's just... Catholicism takes care of itself, and I think LeVay wastes too much time trying to discredit something that discredits itself. So, he makes a lot of good points, but I fall more into the part where it said, why not just call it, like, humanism? You don't need all the ceremony and shit. These days, people are about what's real, what they can see, what they can feel. Maybe, like, one of the new satanic church leaders should do, like, Satanic Bible 2.0 or some shit, where they update LeVay's stuff and maybe get it right. I don't know. Like, And again, my goal is not to make you a Satanist. It's not to make you hate Catholicism like I do. It's not to make you a Christian. It's not to make you a Hindu, Buddhist, fucking Muslim, Sikh, whatever. Like, I'm just spitting out names of religions here. I'm just trying to help you understand things. You pick for yourself. Whatever you want to do, more power to you. I just... I, Yeah, LeFay goes overboard. Like, he's almost just... It's like trying to convince somebody to join your team, and then once they're on your team, you keep bad-mouthing the other team. Like, it just doesn't make sense. He's trying too hard. And if you have to try that hard... To me, that's a sign that you don't even necessarily believe what you're talking about. I could be wrong. I could be misinterpreting. Again, I'm not perfect. I'm not infallible. And just for all I know, nobody or nothing is because anything that's written that says so was written by man. So I will have a few words of closing after this. And next week we will pick up more on our uh, study of the Satanic Bible, and maybe here in a couple days, like I said, I'm going to try to push out a few more episodes a week than what I've been doing. So stick around for the few words of conclusion, and we'll see you next episode. Now, I know that to some of you, it seems like I'm picking on LeVay or making fun of him or making light of him in some of this or judging him. Well, yeah, he straight says his is the first fully made-for-man-by-man religion with no divine anything. Like, <clears throat> that makes it real in his eyes, in his definition. But it also means I get to pick apart everything he's saying because he's basing it, the entirety of his religion on just his words. So if you're going to do that, you got to make sure you at least get shit like original sin right. At any rate, <clears throat> um, we're still covering the book of Lucifer, the Enlightenment, quite a bit left of that to go, so I'm definitely going to have to pump out at least one or two more episodes just to cut through it. After this book, we're about halfway through the Satanic Bible, and from there I have something of a rough schedule worked out in my head for what we'll be covering next. I just want to say thank you all for listening. I mean, I could do this without you, but it'd be kind of pointless because it's just me talking to my computer without you guys, so... I mean, my dog seems interested sometimes, but then other times she's just like, yo, Dad, take me potty, fuck you. I don't know. So thank you guys for listening, because again, I could do it without you, but it'd be kind of pointless. I hope that in listening, you get that new idea. Maybe just have a laugh. Maybe it just makes you think about something. Maybe it distracts you from life. I don't know. Like Whatever your reason for listening is, more power to you. Go for it. I'm glad I'm here for you to be able to use in that capacity, because this actually helps kind of distract me from certain aspects of my life that I choose not to focus on. So, just, um, yeah, thanks for listening. 
We're going to cover more of the Satanic Bible in the next episode. We're going to have some stuff on Dante's Inferno, exorcisms. Uh, there's a like, mockery book that a friend turned me on to called The Holy Fucking Bible. I'm going to do a little blurb on that once I look at it and see what the hell it's all about. <clears throat> Just remember, people as a whole suck. Individuals rock. Great thought. Y'all are my favorites. The individuals, not the toxic hive mind types. And again, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm not the be-all, the end-all by any means. This is one man and his interpretation, his opinion, whatever. You know what I'm saying. So if you have any love mail, hate mail, or correspondence mail you want to drop to me, twist of faith podcast at gmail.com, twist of faith podcast, all one word, at gmail.com. Um, there's things on most of these streaming deals where you can leave me comments or whatever. We're also on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Alex Parkview. <clears throat> um, reach out. I will do my best to return all correspondence, all hate mail. Hell, if you do hate mail, love mail, something like that, you might even get featured in an episode. You never know. If you like what you hear and you feel some desire to support me, and my continued research and my continued production of A Twist of Faith, by all means, I'm not too proud to take some of your money to keep buying new shit to keep talking about. It's not why I'm doing it, but I'm never going to turn down money because who the fuck would? So. Um, any other notes for you guys? Other than the fact that I'm going to try to put a little bit of an increase in my production schedule, not too much new. Still continuing the deep dive of the Satanic Bible upcoming. Thanks for hanging out with me. Tune in for the next episode. Subscribe, like, share. Please share. Spread the word. I mean, it's cool as fuck that I'm seeing international audience growing in this. That's crazy to me. So just share, share, share. That's the biggest thing I can push out, I guess. Uh, like, review, rate. That all helps boost me in the podcast world of distribution, I guess, on the things. I'm not 100% how it works. I don't really care. I'm not doing this to become rich and famous. So this has been A Twist of Faith. As always, I'm your host, Alex Parkview, and I look forward to talking to you guys again in the next episode.